As far as the majority of the vehicles that we discuss in this series go, they do tend to be very over-the-top, crazy creations, very oddball, very out-of-left-field, unexpected cars, in a variety of fields, be it off-road, on-road racing, or limited production supercars or concepts. Sometimes, though, we rein it in a little bit, and we discuss something which could still be an exotic, or could still be a high-performance car even, but it's more obscure rather than outright crazy. And this really is one of those occasions, because the vehicle in question, as of course you saw from the title, is a Bentley. Now Bentley isn't exactly known for making crazy cars, but with that being said, we have of course discussed a pretty crazy Bentley, the Yonardier, earlier in this very series. That absolutely insane supercar concept, which was a precursor to the Bugatti Veyron itself. So they definitely have that capability there. They can go crazy and they can go super powerful and super exotic when necessary. It's more a case that for Bentley, that just isn't usually necessary. They have a certain crowd of people who like to buy their cars in a similar way to Rolls-Royce, and they just cater to that audience. That's what's made them do well, and that is what they focus on. And they rarely step aside from that to have little offshoot projects or motorsport projects, but when they do, they tend to be very special, very unique, and also very highly sought after. And that is exactly what this car is. Now, it's not a car which is talked about a huge amount, which is the exact reason, of course, why it's in this series. And it's not difficult to see, really, why it's not talked about that much. Not that it's bad, far from it, but because it's been superseded in basically every way by the newer, more powerful, and certainly faster Bentley Continental GT which is still going now. It's got such a long production run that it's easy to forget how long the Continental GT has actually been going for. This one, though, preceded the Continental GT. This is the Continental T. And the Continental T in particular is the even more extreme variant of the existing Continental R. Now, the Continental R was much more of a strict luxury Bentley with a hint of performance than the Continental GT is. The GT is much more of an exotic machine and all of the variations thereafter up until now with multiple engine options and that kind of thing has even gone more so into that direction. But initially the Continental R was a performance car but it was first and foremost a luxury coupe and then a performance car second to that. The Continental T made it really the moves toward what would become the Continental GT in having that much more bespoke, more exotic feel with lower production numbers, higher prices, more rarity, and more of a focus on not just being big, powerful, and luxurious, but also actually being surprisingly capable through corners as well. And capable this car certainly is, because the Continental T is basically better in every way than the Continental R. The wheelbase is shorter by about 4 inches, but it's still a 2 plus 2 seater. It's 200 pounds lighter, but it's still a 2.4 ton car, which is roughly the same as the Continental GT. But when you bear in mind that this is a rear-wheel drive car, not all-wheel drive like the GT is, that really does mean this is a seriously heavy machine, which is very well packed, you could put it that way. It's a 6.7 litre, and initially the Continental T had 400 horsepower in 1996. But then Bentley updated the car in around, say, 1998-ish to 420 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. So, pretty impressive. Now, unlike the Continental GT, it's not a W12, but a much more conventional V8. A really, really big V8. A lot bigger, in fact, than what the Continental GT would be, with that 6-litre W12. Now, a car with a 6.7-litre, 420-horsepower V8 and rear-wheel drive that weighs 2.4 tonnes could go either way. It could be really fast, or it could be just passable and more about a gimmick of being a faster one with a bright yellow paint job. Well, that's not the case with the Continental T. Because the Continental T is known for being a really good handling car for its size and weight in particular, whereas the Continental GT isn't really known for that. It's more thought of for its strict, straight line, sheer performance. And it happens to have pretty good handling as well. This one is known much more for its handling than for its straight line speed. Now, with that being said, this car's no slouch. Now, the 0-60 time is quoted at quite a varying level. Some say 4.7 seconds. 
That seems unlikely, given that that's not far off what the Continental GT can do, but with 550 horsepower, the same weight, essentially, and all-wheel drive. So for this car to go just as quick seems very unlikely. The more accurate quote is around the 5.8 second region, which is what more people tend to quote this one as. That seems much more believable, and it's not as impressive, but it's not slow for a 2.4 ton car, especially in the mid to late 90s when cars just weren't as fast, especially in the exotic category to what they are now. No way near, in fact. There are literally hatchbacks now which can absolutely annihilate this car for sheer acceleration. However, being a Bentley, a powerful one, not too surprisingly, it has really good top end speed. A top end speed of, in fact, over 170 miles per hour. Which is pretty good for a big, boxy, extremely heavy Bentley. 170 is not bad at all. And the way that I like to think of this car, which isn't really accurate, but I always think of it this way, is kind of the Bentley version of the MG SVR, rather than the Bentley version of something like a Nissan GTR. The Bentley Continental GT is kind of like a Nissan GTR. It's that big, heavy, all-wheel drive, very capable exotic. Whereas something like an MG SVR, it's not really trying to be the best, it's just this super rare, super exclusive, expensive, fast enough to be good, but not so fast that it's going to worry anything, let's say, significantly better in the category, and that's the way that I think of this one. It's not going to destroy everything else in the exotic category, just like an MG SVR wouldn't, but just like the MG, this is super rare, super exclusive, and just has that weird unicorn car style of exclusivity and desirability to it. There's just something endearing about the Continental T. Now, my personal favourite version is not too surprisingly, to anyone that knows me, the bright yellow one, which is not only ironic for a Bentley, but also, I think, really suits the car. However, the yellow version in particular is not a normal Continental T. Because there are a number of different versions. As I already said, they upped the power a little bit from 96 to 98, and they also made a couple of other variants also, such as the Molliner edition with tighter suspension and better cornering, and an open top version as well, a target top. So there are multiple variants, and there weren't a huge amount of them made anyway, only a few hundred, I believe around 400 or less in total. This one though, the yellow one that you can see occasionally in the video, is actually the rarest of all of the Continental Tees, because there's only one. It's a custom, personalised version, and although the performance I believe isn't any different, it's certainly a very striking looking car, and it's a car which, as far as Bentleys go, I'm personally surprised that people don't talk about more, because Bentley doesn't have a massive arsenal of really fast cars, so most of the ones which people tend to think of tend to be the Continental GT, but this one just doesn't get any chatter from what I've seen. It's not a car that's talked about that much, despite the fact that it's eye-catching and genuinely quick. And I personally think that it deserves to be talked about more. So it's not necessarily the kind of car that we'd usually discuss, but one which I definitely feel deserves a place here. It's rare, it's expensive, it's exclusive, and it's certainly an unsung hero as far as Bentley is concerned. So overall, that's it for this particular pick. Of course, if you enjoyed this one, you can check out the other episodes in this series by clicking through to those at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.